Hey, I'm here with Alok with Loki Group. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what you do and for how long you've been doing it. Sure. So, well, myself, over 22 years of business professional experience doing strategy and M&A um, globally. Uh, I spent five years overseas in 15 countries doing cross-border deals, international transactions. I started Loki Group uh, five years ago, and that's after I was leading the separation of eBay, PayPal, and with their executive leadership team. I gained 60 pounds on the first two months of the project, and I realized that I love what I do, uh, but I wanted to do it differently, and I had a passion on do and doing it for the small, mid-sized companies. And so that's when I started Low Key Group. So we are a strategy, M&A transactions, divestiture, transformation, and a corporate development as a service consulting advisory firm for small, mid-market companies. Awesome. Awesome. And you touched on it right there, but uh, just to expand upon it a little bit. So who exactly is the target market, small to mid-size? Quantify that a little bit for us. Yep. So let's put quantity too. And um, I'd say our, our typical clients are usually, I'd say minimum $25 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. And my largest client right now is $1.3 billion in revenue publicly traded. So okay. publicly traded, private owned, family owned, or private equity owned. Um, and those are the clients that we come in for to help them assess and figure out where the next steps are. Now, I have some clients I also advise that are pre-revenue or, you know, less than $25 million in revenue. That's more of a kind of like, um, hey, you have some questions for me, I'm happy to answer for them. And if there's an opportunity, then, you know, maybe I can help you along your path to grow. And maybe at some future point, if you need my services, then we can work something out. Yeah, perfect. So where do you want to take Loki Group long term? Long term, I want to grow Loki Group to be more of a holistic um, professional service provider to small mid cap businesses. One of the key areas I really want to grow is on the IT managed service provider space, so IT MSPs, where by doing that, we can bring a more holistic solution to our clients. So, not you know, a lot of small mid sized companies have multiple vendors for their IT. Let's try to bring that into one home, right? So you don't need a separate cybersecurity or network security or or IT service ticket um, provider for each one of those, you can try to get that under one house. And so by doing that and, and partnering it with the strategy and MA components, you know, we will know our clients very well. We are going to be a partner with them. And that's our goal. Our goal is to be a partner with our clients and to be an extension of them uh, to help them continue to grow and help them achieve more as they want to do so. Yeah, awesome. So I I could really see bringing that all under a single roof would improve communication and just streamline the whole process versus trying to have, you know, a multitude of vendors trying to communicate with one another and maybe everything gets passed along, maybe it doesn't. You're exactly right. And I mean, part of what ends up happening is you have a lot of finger pointing, right? Like, oh, that's not us, that's on their side. Oh, no, it's not our side, it's their side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's just cut the crap and come down to, you know, brass tacks and like, hey, the buck stops here. We're one stop shop. We got it for you. We'll figure it out. All right. Yeah. Now, um, if there are other vendors involved, you know, if we're using Microsoft or supporting Microsoft, if it's a Microsoft issue, we'll have to work with them, of course. But again, the idea is minimize the pointing of the fingers, centralizing and providing a holistic solution and making it simpler for our clients to know who they need to reach out to. Part of the other challenge, if you have multiple vendors is, well, who do I call? Mm -hmm. Right. Because I don't have one phone number. I do have to call three different people to fi figure out who's the one to solve it. Or is it very easy and I just have one person to call? And, and that's what we want it to be. One yep. stop shop. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So you've been in the business for a little while now, seeing a lot of different businesses along the way. What is one mistake you've learned or a lesson that any other business owner could learn from, irregardless of their industry? Um, the biggest lesson, and I and this is probably the one I... I, I um, support the most, and I, I always bring up in a lot of conversations, is there's one resource that we can never get more of. It's the always fleeting resource that never can get restarted, and that is time, right? People will try to say money and other stuff. Like, no, you can always find more money. There's other money out there. You find another investor, whatever it may be. But time, a minute lost, an hour lost, you can't get that hour back. It's always fleeting. And so the key is to make sure that each hour, each minute, each second that we're using, we're using it towards progressing, right? Whatever that may be, it doesn't necessarily have to mean I'm, I'm nose to the grindstone, I'm always working, but whatever you're doing, you're using it to the fullest. I need to take a break, take that break and understand that you're taking that break and, and you know, work will happen later. Um, but, you know, and part of the way I, I realized this is uh, there's, you know, back when I started Loki Group, I was just kind of running all over the place 
And I spent a lot of time on, on, on advising and looking at deals that are probably weren't worth my effort, right? And, and so hence, I was like, hey, I need to be smarter about how I use my time. I want to be better about how I use my time. And so I need to have a, a, a process in place that allows me to assess where I need to spend my time and where I don't. And mm -hmm. that also then lets me know that, hey, what do I need to get to the curb? What do I need to um, delegate to somebody else? And what do I need to own myself? Perfect, perfect. So you've had a ton of different experience, worked with a lot of people around the world. Has there been a great coach or mentor that stands out in your mind and why? Mm. So I think I've had a, a number of great mentors throughout my career. Uh, the one that's most recent in my mind right now is I was doing some work for him. He owns a boutique executive search firm. His name is Joe Koblenz and just a very uh, methodical, smart individual who great at reading people and great at leading where he knows how to manage a board. He knows how to address, um, you know, family owners of companies and, and multi-generational owners of companies to manage the dynamics that are in place to help them come to a successful and fruitful resolution at the end. Great, great. So as you grow Loki Group, um, what does the future look like? Are there any challenges you foresee as you move forward? Uh, the biggest uh, change I'm looking at, as I kind of mentioned before, is the IT MSP space, like really mm -hmm. bringing that under um, the umbrella of Loki Group and growing that and merging that in. And that's going to be the biggest thing is, you know, how quickly and how fast I want to grow that because um, a lot of different hurdles in the way, right? One, finding the right organizations that will culturally and um, capability-wise come together and make sense. How quickly then, and, and, and again, not everything I've thought through, but how quickly then do I want to merge them under the same brand or do we keep them as a mm -hmm. brand? Um, how fast do I want to grow? How big are these targets going to be? And then, well, based on how fast I want to grow, how much, you know, how much, um, cash do I need to bring to the table and do I need to find, right? Do I need to develop this cash? Can I leverage the cash within these targets to grow? Um, you know, this is probably the biggest challenge is really looking at and finding one, you know, the first platform I want to acquire because that's going to be the building block for everything else. Mm -hmm. And then two, the culture that we want to establish and the other uh, capabilities that we want to bring under house to make it a holistic solution for our clients. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So, what would you recommend to a young person that is starting their first business in today's world? Mm. And they're starting a business from scratch or. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, and the reason I asked that question is because I'm a, like, I think, and I give a huge kudos of people who can start a business from scratch. Uh, I personally, I mean, as we can probably tell from some of this, from part of this interview is I'm a huge supporter of what I call entrepreneurial private equity. So, or entrepreneurial private ownership. So someone becoming an entrepreneur, through acquiring or buying another business that's already in existence. Um, and that's kind of where a lot of my advisory work on smaller companies comes with it. People who are looking to buy a new company and figure out how to do that or looking how to grow that then helping them out that way. Um, but a, a young individual starting their own business, it's going to be one, figure out what's your most viable product that you're creating and what is the market you're trying to address. Two, how are you going to get to them and then three, how are you going to fund it, right? Um, and, and with that, I'd also say that don't look to make any real income back in your pocket for at least three years. Because I, anytime you start anything new, it, human psychology, at least, and I've witnessed this myself, it's about a three-year cycle for people to truly take you seriously. Unless you have something truly phenomenal, mm -hmm. right, that's groundbreaking, disruptive. It takes about three years for people to, you know, for that ground to be broken where people are like, oh, I just met you. Well, I just met you today. I'm not going to trust you yet, but it's cool to see you here. Let's see if you stick around and if, you want, if, you, if you're really eager about making this successful. And then your two comes around and like, oh, okay, you're still here. So you're really at it and you really try to make this work. Okay, good luck to you. And then your three comes around like, oh, so you're serious and you've got someone who trusted you and they, someone else bought from you. Okay, great. I'll now buy from you as well. Right. And so. What, and that cycle is that first year, it's you got to push the ground. So you got to mm -hmm. create that uh, brand for yourself. Mm -hmm. The second year, you've created a brand, you've created a foundation, you've got to find the quote unquote, the angels that want to take that first uh, step with you 
and, and, give, and give you that first opportunity. And then once you get that first opportunity, that's when the, the waves start to roll in and things start to happen because after someone else already gave you a break, now that's already been tested, more people are willing to do it. And yeah. it's knowing that you got to expect the three-year cycle. So plan for a three-year cycle um, and, and don't be discouraged if something don't, if things don't turn up in the first year. Yeah. Yeah. It takes that time to really prove yourself and prove yourself to the market to where people are comfortable you know, buying from you. Yep. Agreed. Perfect. So how can people find out more about you or more about Loki group? What's the best way to get in touch? Yep. So our website is lowkey.group. So L O K I dot G R O U P. It's an interesting domain name, right? Um, you don't see a lot of dot groups. Uh, my email is on there. You can reach out to me uh, through the website and uh, that's the, I guess, the first step. And then just reach out to me and I'm happy to have conversations. I love brainstorming. If you have a problem, if you have a question, please send me your questions. And, you know, maybe that could help me uh, start my video blog that I'm trying to do for uh, LinkedIn and other things. So I'd appreciate that. Perfect. Perfect. Maybe this is, is what jump starts it off right here. <laughs> that would be exciting. I'll let you know about that, Nate, too. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So my last question for you is what most inspires you as you move forward in the business today? Mm. Honestly, what most inspires me is my family, right? It's really trying to create something for them, create a good life for them. And honestly, hopefully, if, if they want to, you know, provide a legacy for them to, you know, come in and learn from or, or do something new, whatever they want to do, I want to support. But they are my inspiration that push me to push myself. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Loke, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your story and about Loki Group. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.